So what's up everybody, Byron here from ETA, and I'm excited. This is the Nobleman TKO2 helmet. <clears throat> so this has been a little bit of a storied saga to get to me. The first one was ordered, and then it got sent back. Then the second one was ordered, and it was lost in transit. So this is actually the third helmet that they have sent me. So kudos to Nobleman. Let's get into this. And I'm going to go a little bit deep and in-depth in this helmet. So if you have the attention span of a goldfish, you probably just want to skip to the end. So it comes packaged like so, which as you can see, courtesy of the amazing package handling characteristics of the third world, the box is a little dinged up. So the first thing you see is a Nobleman brochure, touch your limits, talks about some of the different stuff that they have. It's a pretty cool little catalog. It's really, really neat. Next thing, I got a Nobleman hat, which I gotta say, this is actually a pretty cool hat. It's your basic snapback cap, nothing fancy. Came with a personalized note that says, sorry to keep you waiting. I don't know if the camera will focus on that. So, show you what we got here. It says, sorry to keep you waiting, a little present for you. So I'm assuming that's the hat, so. Thank you, Nobleman Tech. That's pretty awesome of you. All right, so now we're gonna pull this out. So now I'm gonna go into this a little bit more in depth than some of the other YouTubers have. And I believe a lot of people have a problem trusting safety standards from China. And uh, rightfully so, in many cases. So here we have the helmet bag, which the helmet is not in the bag. So that's already a little weird. Whew. The, uh, definitely gonna wanna let this air out for a few days before you take it for a ride, just a little FYI. <clears throat> so, first off, right here on the back of the helmet, is the DOT FM VSS 218 certified and ECE 2205. And so it does give a rating for the ECE standard. Now let's talk about this a little bit before I even get into the helmet. Somewhere on the strap, there's supposed to be an ECE label if this is actually ECE certified it'll, it'll pop up here uh, okay we'll get back to that thought in a minute shell is constructed of ABS plastic liner is constructed of expanded polystyrene some common substances can seriously damage the helmet without the damage being visible to the user apply only mild soap water I'm sorry, apply only mild soap and water to the shell. Comfort padding and liner make no modifications. Always fasten the helmet securely. This helmet is designed to absorb energy by partial destruction of the shell and liner, though the damage may not be obvious to the user. If the helmet experiences a severe impact, return the helmet to the manufacturer for inspection or destroy the helmet. So I'm going to go ahead right now and correct one myth that I see a lot of people on, especially on skate channels. Uh, helmets are good for one impact, guys. I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I've had my helmet forever and, and I've, I've fallen down a whole bunch with it and everything. Guys, motorcycle helmets, motorcycle racers, drag racers, car racers, people who take this stuff seriously. And I'm not saying that, that everybody out there doesn't take this stuff seriously. But if you have a helmet, 
it's rated for one impact. It's not rated for multiple impacts. So if you do, God forbid, go head over ass on your board and land on your skull, don't reuse your helmet. Get a new one. I know it's a little expensive, but it's not worth your life. Helmets, in general, like this, rated for one impact. So we're going to go ahead and do a nice thorough inspection. We have a Nobleman Touch Your Limits Owner's Manual. We'll go through this a little bit later. We got some stickers and a, a second handwritten note, which I think is pretty cool. What do we got? What's this one say? You deserve the good things in the world. Thank you. That's pretty cool. And some stickers. Let's talk about this faceplate. This faceplate, as you can see on the inside, nobody seems to have shown this in their videos, but this is padded. So there is some padding and protection. There is a cutout here for a microphone. So for example, eventually I'm going to find a Bluetooth mic that I'm happy with, and I'm going to be able to, to mount the microphone in here. You got the Nobleman Tech label here. This is a very solid piece. Uh, a lot of the other reviewers doesn't, uh, doesn't really look like it's a nice solid piece. This, this is actually a nice solid piece. You have some surprisingly good ventilation here. That's pretty cool. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So you can see the ventilation there. You get some ventilation there. So the front piece is ventilated. I do not see any ventilation on the helmet itself. And quick release system. So this visor can be removed um, through a quick release. Well, I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. So for right now, I'm going to leave it intact. And I'm just going to flip it up. And we're going to get a look at this padding. How does this padding attach? This padding is, okay. So this padding uses a series of posts and snaps inside. That's actually a pretty good sign. Uh, these are the double XL pads because I have a big ass nugget. But this will kind of show you what I'm talking about here. You can see these red points are where and how it attaches. This is the earpiece. So that's fairly nice. I'm going to go ahead and detach the other side. So if this actually is ECE rated uh, and it's not just a sticker on the back, there's going to be a code on the chin strap. Grab my tiny X-Acto knife. Cut this open. Get rid of this little brochure. We'll go through that a little later. I'm going to continue pulling out this liner because I want to see what we can see. It says that this is supposed to be removable. So there's a hard plastic um, rim that goes around the outside here that kind of helps to lock it in. I'm still looking for that ECE certified on the label. I don't believe this is actually ECE certified. And I say that because if it's ECE certified, you're gonna see um, ECE and then a country code, one, two, three, four, five, six. And what that means is that's the country in which the helmet was certified. So like, I think six is the Netherlands, like three is Germany. It, it all has a code and a meaning. Um, this is ECE R2205. The helmet is listed at 1,250 grams, which we're going to confirm the weight here in a little bit. Again, I want to see here how this comes apart. This is supposed to be a removable liner, and if it's a removable liner, then that means I can wash it. It has a cutout here in the ear, which I'm going to try my very best to get on camera. Right here. 
right about where my finger is on each side and that's so you can actually put a set of headphones in there and it does have a very nice ratchet strap for the chin strap connection that is actually pretty cool now this visor is supposed to come off and so this piece The way that this attaches is this clicks in and out. It's got a fairly um, positive ratcheting system. So I'm gonna put the helmet on and then I'm gonna click this in place, just to show you guys how that works. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, ear pieces back in. And this is gonna be this side. For right now I'm gonna go ahead and put these ear pieces in. Um, the, the smell of chemicals is quite overpowering right now but that's kind of to be expected with the new helmet it's just a, the nature of the beast it will air out all right now we'll go ahead and put this earpiece back in I am a little disappointed though uh, I don't like I said I I'm not saying that it's not a, a proper protective device but what I am saying is this is not ECE certified. So that is a little disconcerting to me. Go ahead and pop this on. Okay. So with this popped on, this is a very, very nice fit. It does reduce the outside noise a little bit, and that is kind of sort of to be expected. It is a full face helmet. Actually, it's not a full-face helmet. It, just to be really clear, this is not actually a full-face helmet. This is a three-quarter helmet. So you've got this that pulls down, so you've got a nice clear shade, clear protection. And then over here, you've got a visor that flips down. And that's pretty cool. And so now you have a set of sunglasses, basically. And you can disconnect this visor, remove the visor, and then you can just go with this and you've got your, your eye protection. Especially here um, in Abu Dhabi, I don't like to ride without eye protection. So let's check this out and see what this is about. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take this off. I really like that ratcheting mechanism. I really like that. That's very nice. So now we're going to go ahead and connect this, which this just kind of lines up and pops into place like so. Okay, got one side locked in. There it is. Now I have both sides locked in. Now let's see if we can put this on or I have a strange suspicion this is going to be a little small now. And I would be wrong. So it does fit. Uh, this, this piece is very close to my nose. Not quite sure how I feel about that. It could be a little bit further away. So now we're all comfortably snugged up here. This is very nice padding. The, the cheek padding is good. There's not a lot of padding on the front here, and my nose is actually touching this bridge. I'll show you. This is what it looks like here when it's all closed. This is the clear visor. And if for some reason you really, really want to, you can flip this out as well. Go ahead and remove that. I'm curious to see how donning and doffing this is with this face piece installed. It's not bad. It cradles your head very nicely. Um, so that is a very big plus. It doesn't flop around a lot. Um, my ProTech does just a tiny bit flop around. And what I'm going to do right now, since I've got the helmet assembled, right, with the chin piece and everything, I am going to go ahead and pause, get my scale, come back, and I'm going to weigh this, and then I'm going to weigh my Protex so you guys can have a, a pretty good example. 
This is a 2XL helmet. And to be very honest, I, I, I wish they had a little bit of a bigger nose piece because my nose is like right there. There's, there's maybe a quarter inch gap between my nose and the front of this. I may investigate if I can pull some of that padding out a little bit. We'll find out. All right, guys, so we're back. Go ahead, fire up the old scale. Lent is zero. Now I'm gonna do this two ways. I'm gonna weigh it in pounds and ounces for the metrically challenged, and then I'm gonna do it in what everybody else in the entire world except America uses, the metric system. So, here we go. Find that happy balance point. Okay, so we are at 3.9 ounces. I'm sorry. We are at 3.9 pounds. That's not too bad. Protec. Tipping the scales at one pound, three ounces. So it's a little bit heavier than the ProTech and theoretically offers a better level of protection, especially with the inbuilt face protection. And to be perfectly honest, I'm happy with the protection that my ProTech offers. What I really wanted was something for my eyes and face. So the chances are pretty high that I'm gonna wear this thing without the face mask, just so you guys know that. Now, just because I'm genuinely curious, let's see what this looks like. Let's pop these tabs out. There are two locking tabs here on the bottom. And let's weigh just the nose piece, and just the nose piece is eight ounces. So if you rock this in three-quarter configuration, we're at 3.1 pounds. One point three pounds. This is a very light helmet. This is a little bit heavier. In terms of how they fit, this one fits better than that one. On to the metric system. So it's advertised at 1,250 grams plus or minus 50 grams, and this is actually 1,406 grams. This is 500 grams, 542 grams. So now we're gonna check out what happens if we use the quick release and we take this clear plastic off. So as you can see, we've got this off. Now, the method of release is you have to pop it to where it's halfway between locked up and locked down, and then you just pull straight out and these release. So that's kind of cool. Now let's see what we're at with the small reduction here. We are at 1,243 grams. So we're right in the ballpark without this and with this. Wow. Okay. So the clear visor is 161 grams. All right, I just converted it over to freedom per square inch. And this would be 5.7 ounces for the clear visor. That's pretty cool. And here's the lever that I was talking about earlier. This is the little lever mechanism. As you can see, it uh, deploys the sun shades. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. One of the reasons that this helmet actually appealed to me visually 
is that it looks very, very similar to my old flight helmet back when I was a crew chief. There are obviously some very key differences, but it looks similar. So, you know, go with what you know. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. Now this is actually quite comfortable, just like this. Very, very comfortable, fits very nicely. I can still hear pretty well. And uh, there we go. We flip that down. Now, as far as this goes, there's two ways. You can use the lever or you can just flip it up and down manually. I intend to use the lever because, I mean, it's there. And that's just cool. Second thing, I am noticing absolutely no optical distortion as I'm looking out of this. So that is a really good thing. This helmet's very good. It's not moving around too much. So in this case, the double XL is definitely the fit I needed. Now I would feel pretty comfortable riding just like this. It gives me the protection from the sun that I want, keeps the dust out of my eyes, and that's pretty cool. But it's nice to know that I have the option for riding at night and still have my face covered if I want it, and it's there. But honestly, I, I feel like it's a little awkward to have this as, as the three-quarter setup without the, um, it, well, yeah. It, to have this on the front with the three-quarter setup, I think it would just be a little weird. We're gonna see if we can do this real quick. I guess there's a little technique here, but some of the guys I've seen in the videos are able to just pop this thing in and out. I can get one side in. This is not the most, uh, it's not the most intuitive thing in the world to do while you're wearing it. I do like that ratchet strap though. Not gonna lie, I do like that ratchet strap. We're gonna go ahead and pop this thing in again. That's where I was missing. Okay, that's a little lower. Pop it in. Okay, we're locked in. So now, once this piece is locked in, it is pretty solid. It is pretty solid. Let's see what it looks like now. Actually, I've noticed um, without that clear visor, the way that this sits on my head now is not bad. Um, it sits a little better. I think maybe the, the clear, the weight of the clear visor was just kind of, there we go. And as you can see, this kind of lines up with the grooves here on the face plate. So this is pretty cool. Um, getting a little bit of fog, but not too bad. Uh, I mean, if I was outside, this really wouldn't be a thing. Overall, not bad. Not bad at all. You can very quickly pop that off. And now that I've kind of sort of figured out where the holes are, got one side. Yeah, this is not very intuitive to do while you're wearing it. There it is. Do I think that, okay, come on. There's one side. I don't know that I would necessarily want to pop this on and off while I'm riding. I don't know that that's a thing I would do. But this is pretty nice. Um, sits a little better on my head now, so that's a good thing. It's definitely heavier than my ProTech. Uh, I don't know in the summer heat here in Abu Dhabi if this is going to be a smart helmet to wear. I don't know that it won't be, to be perfectly fair. But damn. It looks cool, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I think I like it this way better, to be perfectly honest. Still kind of has a cool, cool look. A little bit more Starship Troopers this way. 
Overall, yeah, pretty happy with it. But again, it, it does concern me. And what concerns me is, first off, if, if for those of you who don't know, the DOT label on the back of the helmet is bullshit. I'm sorry, but it is. Any company can say, we tested it and we feel it's DOT certified and put a DOT label on it and call it a day. Now, if they do get audited and they do get investigated and they do test it and they find that it doesn't meet DOT specifications, there's a fine that's issued to the company and then the company says, oh, my bad, and that's that. So I do have a problem with DOT. This ECE R2205, again, if this were actually ECE certified, it would be here on this tag. And it would state the country in which it was tested, which ECE is a European Union standard. So one of the European Union countries is gonna to have to test this. Now, do I know that it's ATSM certified or any of the other different certifications that are out there? No, I don't. All I have to go on is this. And so, I'm not gonna tell you guys that this will protect you in a motorcycle accident. And in fact, let's just be blunt. If, if you're riding a motorcycle, you really don't want this kind of helmet anyway. You want a dedicated motorcycle helmet. What this helmet does offer is a fairly comfortable fit. It sits very nicely on the head. It offers inbuilt eye protection. There is the same type of foam that's inside my ProTech here on the inside of this. So, in my opinion, and again, this is, I'm basing this on the evidence that is right here in front of me. I would say that this and that ProTech are gonna protect to a similar degree in the event of an accident. Do with that information what you will. This is just my feelings and what I'm seeing and feeling in my hand. Now this is the matte black color, and it's, it does have a very nice feel. It's got a very soft touch to it. Uh, that might be some kind of like a Plasti Dip type thing or like the German cars where they have the soft touch. Um, so that's pretty cool. Again, because it has a detachable visor, I will not call this a full face helmet. I will call it a three quarter helmet, but I will not call it a full face helmet. Do I feel that this will protect me sufficiently at e-skate speeds? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, it's got the same density of the foam inside this helmet as it does in that ProTech. And this ProTech, I already know. I have already tested ProTech the hard way, and I'm still here today. It did everything that it needed to do, and it did it very well. So, would I choose this over the ProTech? The problem that I had that I wanted to solve is. I don't always like wearing my very nice prescription Oakleys when I'm riding a skateboard. Sometimes it's a little bit dark. Sometimes it's a little bit, you know, the, the lighting isn't quite right. And then with the polarization on the glasses, it makes it very, very hard for me to um, see like the camera screens and stuff like that when I'm filming and riding. So this helmet, solves a lot of those issues for me. I'm not so much a big fan of this piece, but I will say, uh, as far as like some of the other uh, three-quarter helmets that I've seen with the detachable face piece, this is actually fairly sturdy. You guys can't really tell through the camera, but I'm actually putting quite a bit of force on this. 
And this is not a foam material. This is actually like a hard rubber type of material. I would much rather have this open for ventilation personally than I would, you know, anything else. And I, I would really wish that there was some type of ventilation across the top and an exit port at the back for ventilation and airflow and things like that. But realistically speaking, a lot of those ventilation on motorcycle helmets, they don't really do anything until you're moving at speed anyway. Definitely make an impact, but I really don't think it would make that big of a deal. I'm gonna keep going on trying to get this liner uh, disassembled a little bit more, just so I can get a, a good clear view and show you guys the foam and everything that's inside this helmet. I'll show this to you guys at home, in case you do have one of these helmets and you're like, how do I get the liner out? I figured it out. This uses a bayonet type clip. If you see here, here, and here. And these line up with slots in the shell here. It's a little hard for the camera to focus on it, but just take my word for it, guys. There's three of those going around the front. Here's the foam that's on the inside. And I'm just going to tell you, this is the GN1 foam, which is an energy absorbing and energy dissipating foam. So that is a good sign. And just to show you what I'm talking about, pull the liner out of my ProTech here. As you can see, this is the same type of foam. And it is approximately the same density as what's in my ProTech. So I do feel a lot better about that now. Um, again, this helmet is not ECE rated. So bear that in mind if you are in a European country that requires that, or you are somehow foolish enough to think that you're gonna take this and go ride a motorcycle with it. I really hope you don't. This is not a motorcycle helmet. So this card here is part of what locks this liner in in the rear. And to make the reinstallation a little bit easier, I'm gonna go ahead and line up these bayonets. And I'm gonna to try to get the mic close enough that you can hear it. It clicks in when it's locked. Hopefully you guys heard that click. So in terms of how the liner comes in and out, it is a fully removable liner, which means you can wash it. That's a beautiful thing. This is not leather. This is like a synthetic type of material. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but that's not a bad thing. So this is gonna go in here. You just kind of fold the card around the foam and then it will kind of lock into place once you get it just Right. Okay. So now we're going to summarize. Will this helmet protect you in an e-skate crash? And I believe the answer is yes, it will. Would I trust my life to this helmet if I have like a bio boards and I'm routinely riding at maximum speed? No, I wouldn't. Do I feel that this is a quality helmet? Uh, I feel it's pretty decent, yeah. Would I say it's worth the $300 price tag? I mean, that's speculative. Uh, if I had paid full price for this helmet, would I feel ripped off? If I didn't know any better, maybe. You'll feel it kind of pop into position. And then you can just go ahead and get your ear cups. And these ear cups are also directional. So one side only goes on one side and the other side only goes on the other side. And these just kind of click in. Again, this is not a motorcycle helmet. One, two, and three. Am I saying that this is a bad buy? No. Do I have any buyer's remorse on this helmet? No, I don't. Because this helmet is pretty much exactly what I wanted. Again. 
this is more or less how I planned on wearing the helmet. I've got my eye protection, I've got my sun protection, I've got plenty of airflow here. Like this, I don't think it would be too bad in the summer, and if it does, I've got the Protec. But it is not ECE rated. And I don't think it's DOT rated. The last question we have to answer is, can I wear glasses with this? Well, we're about to find out. I'm gonna do this two ways. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the front visor on. This does actually seem to lock in and out a little bit easier as it kind of wears in a little, I guess. So go ahead and put this on. Well, let's find out. So yeah, I can. Um, actually, it's not too bad. Gonna put the sunglasses down over the glasses. Yes, I can. However, I can't see a damn thing because they're all fogged up. <sighs> all right. They're pretty comfy like this though. And when I do this, I don't get any fog, which is cool. Let's go ahead and do the strap. Pop that up. And there you go. So this is my review of the Nobleman TKO2 helmet. Uh, for those curious, I'm an aviation safety, I'm a quality control inspector. I do take these things very seriously. I tend to look at everything with a very critical eye. So I'm gonna be taking some of my feedback um, that I find on the helmet. And tomorrow, I'm after work, I'm gonna take the board. I've got some new shoes I gotta try out. So I've got the uh, footprint uh, velocity, which these shoes are absolutely amazing. I'm gonna try them out on the board with my new helmet here. And we're going to do some video, and I'm going to give you feedback and an update on how I feel both of those are going. Tomorrow, tomorrow's supposed to be, I don't know, 80-something degrees. So that is a warm winter. That is a cold winter's day here, somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees. And we should have some good bright sunlight. So I'm going to have the sun beaming directly on this black helmet, and we're going to see how hot we get while out and about and enjoying the lovely sights of Mazdar City. I'm going to give it probably a good 10K ride, see how it feels, and then we'll conclude this video. So this is Byron. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Now i got to clean this mess up. What's up, everybody? Byron here from ETA, and we're going to take this here Nobleman Tech TKO2 helmet out. It is a lovely Saturday morning. It's about 8.30ish, give or take, and let's see here, it is approximately 21 degrees Celsius outside, so it should be a pretty nice day. A um, little bit too chilly to uh, bother wearing the Nobleman Tech jacket, so I'm just going to rock uh, a hoodie and my normal pads. There you go. But we're going to slap the helmet on, we're going to take it for a ride, we're going to see how it feels. I brought both helmets with me, so I'm going to be checking both of them. The other thing that we're going to be testing today is the footprint uh, shoes, the footprint velocities that I got, and I'm going to be testing out the footprint king foam insoles, which I'm going to be going ahead and putting in my Converse. So I'm going to rock those with a Converse, see if it makes a difference in how my foot feels, see how the board feels, that type of thing. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and change it out. We're going to come back to the car, we're going to change it out, and then we're going to rock the uh, footprint velocities. I might change up the order a little bit. I don't really know. See how I feel. Got my coffee. Shout out to Me Cup. If you guys don't have one of these things yet, it's amazing. Uh, my downstairs neighbor, it's their company, it's their project, it's a very small company and they produce absolutely amazing, amazing coffee cups. So for some weird reason, Peter McKinnon, if you're watching this, you need one of these for your coffee. 
we'll be back. So what's up everybody? We're out here at the first stop for the day. And I just wanna say, I'm not a fan of this, uh, this face piece. And I think a good portion of that is just because of the physical size of my face compared to the sizing options on the helmet. Hopefully you can hear me okay. If not, go ahead and pop this off. All right, so as I was saying, for my head size, wearing the face plate is not particularly comfortable, but don't let that dissuade you, try it. You have the option. You know, you can also wear it with the, the uh, clear face shield if you're riding at night, which obviously, as you can tell, it's uh, pretty bright out here. So anyway, all in all, if I had to rate it on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the most comfortable helmet I've ever worn in my life, and one being, you know, garbage, I'm gonna set this at a solid seven and a half. I would put my ProTech, honestly, at about an eight, eight and a half. So if you guys need a little comparison or something like that, I'd put the ProTech helmet at about an eight and a half. All right, so this is Byron. Y'all have a great rest of your day.